Hey everybody, this is Bob from Wham's Tech, and today we're going to continue with our Glide gamification app. And this one was another feature request from a user who is asking, can I see a list of all of the items that were used or that were played in chronological order from when they were played? Because sometimes if I got a new item and I want to use that item, it's going to impact uh, my game, right? Instead of having to go to the transaction log and looking to see if it's true or not, and then figuring out when that was even marked true, there's a way we can do this in the Glide app. All right, now this one involves a little bit of Google script. And if you're not familiar with Google script, I'm gonna give you um, the script that I'm using and you can tweak it to your own uh, ability here and then be able to see this in the app. So first what we have to do is make sure that we have a new column in our transaction log here called timestamp used. And you see it here, timestamp used. All right, then we have to create a new script in Google that's gonna fill in this column with a timestamp of whenever this used checkbox uh, was marked true. And we know that this used checkbox is marked true whenever a user goes into their inventory and marks as use item, or you can mark as play item or something of that nature here. All right, now the information that you need to know is one, which column is this used column here for you? So mine is G, which is column seven. And in which column are you gonna place your timestamp? Timestamp used, this is column M. For me, it's 13. So this number seven and number 13 are the numbers I'm gonna be using for this particular tutorial. All right, next, you have to go to tools up in your spreadsheet, tools, and then script editor. And if you have never created a script before, that's okay. Again, I'm gonna give you the script. You can just copy and paste it right here into uh, your script. You're gonna see something that looks similar to this. Uh, let's just see, I'm gonna blah, 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 blah. Uh, like this, it says function, my function, and it's empty, all right? You're gonna take that, you're gonna trash it, and if you look in the description below, you'll see um, a, the, this particular script, you will just copy it and paste it right here and replace that script um, in the section here. And so ultimately, you should probably see it something that says code.js, and it should look exactly like this. Now here's where you need to uh, do some fine tuning based on your specific spreadsheet. What this script does is it basically is going to input that timestamp whenever that column was marked true. So here I have column to check. This column to check right now is seven because my um, used column is column G, column seven. So for you, it's column D, then you put down four instead of seven. Fine. Next, under the sheet name, we're gonna label it with the name of our spreadsheet that the uh, transactions are happening, right? In my spreadsheet, mine is transactions here, and it's column seven, right? So I'd say transactions seven. And so for your script, you'll say transactions seven or whatever your sheet name is, whatever your column is, okay? Okay, next, um, you're gonna look at line 13. And line 13 has, okay, which row are we starting on and what are the values um, that we wanna start with? So I'm starting with column seven here and I'm ending with my timestamp column. In this case, it's column 13, okay? And um, you will just put in your numbers respectively, right? So if your used item column is column four, you'd put down four here. And if your timestamp column is uh, J, which is 10, you'd put down 10 here. Minus, minus G and M, seven and 13. All right, uh, then you can leave everything else as is. All right, so basically what this section is doing here is we're gonna grab the row that has a change to this column. And we're gonna see whether or not that item was marked as true. Okay. And if it's marked as true, if this used item, which exists in our first column here as labeled seven, if it is marked as true, then we are going to put in a new date, which is the timestamp of the item, okay? All right, I named this set timestamp. You can see here the function is called set timestamp. 
Um, you might want to name your script as well. Uh, you can name it whatever you'd like. I'm calling mine just timestamped used. You can call it gamification scripts. You can call it whatever you'd like. All right. And then the last step here is you need to set a trigger. All right. So we want this script to run every time somebody marks that column as true. So there's a trigger involved on the change of the spreadsheet. So what you'll do here from this section is you'll go to edit and you'll go to current project triggers. You're going to add a new trigger down at the bottom here. And I already have one. Okay. You're going to choose the name of your function. And again, this function is the one that's set here. So this says set timestamp. So I see set timestamp as my function. And then the event source is the spreadsheet. And on event change, we're going to change it to on change. So whenever there's a change to the spreadsheet, it's going to run this function, which is going to look for the true, which is then going to set the timestamp that it was marked true. All right, I'm going to hit save here. And just so you see that this works, I'm going to go back to my function. I'm going to hit save. All right. And watch this. So now in my spreadsheet, whenever an item is used, I'm just going to fake this here. So pretend this is my app, someone marking it true. So someone's gonna use this linen right here, right? I'm gonna paste it as true and then watch this cell. You should see a timestamp fill in just like that. And you see it's got the new timestamp right here. All right, so now we can sort by timestamp. That's the next part. Back in our app, now we need to display our list of items that were used in chronological order. So I'm gonna go to my admin tab here. And let's create an inline list that scrolls. So to do that, we're gonna add a new component. We'll call it an inline list. And our inline list is gonna be of the values of our uh, transactions, just like this. And we want this to be maybe tiles view, or you can do cards view. I'm gonna stick with tiles. We'll do tiles view here. And we can name this inline list as um, items played or items used. Okay. And under the orientation of this inline list, we want to change it to horizontal. So then now I now we uh, can like scroll through. See that we can scroll through our items, and that's not taking up a lot of space in our admin tab. Now maybe we wanna see more items than just this one here. So we can change our tiles per row to maybe like three across, All right? Now this item is really tiny, so maybe we wanna change our tile shape to a square so we can see the full tile. And we're gonna to wanna to know what the item is, right? So under the title, we can choose the item. Maybe we wanna see uh, who played the item. So for details, we can go to the uh, name of the person or the email. Do we have the name of the person? I don't think we do. We never created that. We have the email though, at least. So we could do email. Um, if you wanted to have some other information here in your transactions log, you would just do some lookups. Let's go ahead and do that now. Why not, right? All right, I'm gonna go to data under my transactions. Let's get some information about this user. Because we have here, I don't think we do, do we? Of who is the item? No, we don't. All right, so we're going to do an add a column. We're going to relate. Oop, add a column. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we'll do rel user. Let's just make sure I don't already have one. So I'm going to do a column type lookup. Relation column, shop, crafted. No, I don't have one. All right, so we're gonna do a relation where the email address matches the values in users and then email. There we go. And we need to match multiple because there's only one email address in our users column to match to. Hit done. And now we can get some information about our user. So let's do the username. And this will be a lookup. So look up of the user and look at the username. Awesome. And we can also grab the user image. Look up 
of the user avatar. Maybe you also want to grab their guild because maybe if somebody plays a card, it affects the whole guild. So you need to know that information, right? So I'll do add a column, look up, we'll call this user guild, relation column, user guild. There we go. That should be sufficient. Let's go back to our layout. Okay, and so maybe we have the item that's being played. Maybe we want the timestamp underneath here. So instead of email, let's get the timestamp used, like so. All right, and then let's see. Oh, because we're doing two. Okay, so if you want to add other information, we need only have two across, so two tiles per row. So that way underneath here, we can have some more information. This is fun. So now we can have the avatar be our user image. So this is the person who played it. Our caption can be the name of the person, username. Awesome, all right. Um, what else do we want? Maybe the tag should be the timestamp used like this. And so then instead of here, maybe our details is the guild. You know, play around with what information you want where. Okay, something like this. And then last thing you do is just sort it. So under the features of this inline list, we're gonna to go to filter and we're gonna, or not filter, sorry. We're gonna to go to sort. Instead of by sheet order, we're gonna sort by timestamp used in reverse chronological order. So that way the most recently used item will be um, here. Now you can see here that if I click on any of these items, I'm gonna be brought to the details view of the transaction, which is typically reserved for the player, right? To use the item and drop the item. So we're not gonna to wanna to see this. So I'm gonna hit back here and we're gonna change the action from view details to none. Awesome. And the last thing is that we only wanna see items in here that were used. We don't wanna see items that were unused. So we also wanna filter this inline list where the item, or sorry, where the used column is true. And so now we're only gonna see items that were used and we can see the due date, or sorry, the timestamp of those items, who is the owner of this item, what guild they belong to, and, and so forth. All right, so there you have it. Pretty easy in terms of adding in this inline list. The only tricky part is the scripting, right? And there's a lot that can kind of go wrong with the scripting if you have little things wrong. So I recommend just doing a copy and paste and adjusting just those numbers that I mentioned in my video here. And certainly you could do this, pro this process without the script. The thing you're gonna lose though is when the item was played, which is pretty important, right? Because there's no other way to sort this information from the transaction log when you want it here in this inline list. The only options you have available for you currently without the scripting is when the item was purchased, which doesn't make much sense here, um, or just the sheet order or things of that nature. So you really wanna have that timestamp. That way you can see when the item was played, the most recently played item. Uh, and it just makes sense in the context and then the storyline of uh, your, your gamification experience, right? Now, uh, again, I recommend just a copy and paste. If, if you need any help at all, feel free to email me at robert.petito at woodward.edu. Good luck, and as always, thanks for watching.